Hi, I'm Jeff Thompson, President and CEO of IMA, the Institute of Management Accountants, and welcome to Unit 5, Control Activities, in the course Improving Confidence in Sustainability Information. In Unit 4, we covered risk assessment. So we identify risks to achieving objectives, whether they're sustainability objectives or financial objectives. Here in Unit 5, we identify those control activities that manage risks to an acceptable level relative to achieving the objectives we set forth for either financial or non-financial activities. So in this unit, we're going to define the principles associated with this component, and then we're gonna relate aspects of these principles in a practical way using a couple of case studies. Principle 10, the organization selects and develops control activities that contribute to the mitigation of risk. So this is what I said earlier. You identify a risk, a control activity is a specific task, and we're gonna talk in a minute about segregation of duties, for example, that manages or mitigates that risk to an acceptable level. We develop a balance of different types of control activities. Some might be preventative, pro proactive, those that you put in advance in a transaction processing system, for example, or a uh, inventory management control process that manages water consumption. These are preventative to prevent spillovers or defects or quality errors. Detective are those that are after the fact, detect uh, error conditions and error rates and things of those sorts. So all types of controls, they could be detective, they could be preventative, they could be automated, they could be manual, they could be uh, periodic, or they could be recurring. The key is to have a balance of controls that work for your organization. It's very, very important that we employ segregation of duties as we've referred to a couple of times. Segregation of duties, for example, is where you don't wanna have one individual who has too much authority. For example, a transaction to purchase a natural resource or a resource of any kind. You don't want that individual to be procuring, purchasing, authorizing, approving and paying, right? You want some separation or segregation of duties to balance the controls and to balance the accountability. So let's take a look at Pirelli Tires, uh, a mini case study. Pirelli Tires is of course an Italian tire company that employs a broad mix of different types of control activities. And the breadth and depth and balance of control activities can only be determined by the organization. Pirelli, by the way, is a nearly $7 billion operation uh, as of 2016. They're a multinational tire manufacturing company, 19 manufacturing sites in 13 countries, but they actually have a sales presence in 160 countries, including the U.S. They have a robust internal audit program, which includes third-party assurance of sustainability information from suppliers. This is very, very important. If Pirelli, for example, is obtaining resources from third parties, which they are, that third party actually has impact on the reputation of Pirelli tires. So it's important that assurance and attestation for sustainability information extends throughout the value chain of Pirelli tires, which they do, because they're one brand, one organization, one reputation, even if they outsource or offshore some activities. <clears throat> From a governance perspective, their ERM and sustainability functions reside within the same department with oversight from a board committee. ERM is enterprise risk management. So there's collaboration, there's integration, there's alignment of activities, which arguably could lessen the risk of an internal controls breakdown. And finally, the importance of enabling technology used by Pirelli Tires. They have a proprietary IT system that consolidates worldwide business unit environmental and social performance data with a mix of preventative and detective controls. So technology can be a great enabler to an effective system of internal controls over both financial reporting and non-financial reporting. Next, principle 11. The organization selects and develops general control activities over technology. So there's different types of controls over technology. There are general controls at the infrastructure level, 
and then there's user controls at the applications layer. Controls over technology infrastructure may not suffice for financial reporting. They may not suffice if your sustainability information is not housed holistically within your overall set of performance data. The more that your sustainability information is housed in disparate systems, ERP, CRM, the harder it's going to be to put internal controls, assurance, and attestation around that data to improve its confidence and integrity. And of course, as it relates to sustainability information, always try to leverage what you do for financial information to the extent possible. It results in greater consistency and more effectiveness and efficiency. Principle 12, deploys control activities through policies and procedures. You know, I don't know about you, but reading and writing policies and procedures is akin to watching paint dry. It's not the most interesting uh, or invigorating activity, but it could be absolutely critical to an organization's success. We may remember um, an airline not too long ago that experienced significant damage to its reputation when a doctor was pulled off their airplane um, because of what was a misunderstood policy. Um, the individuals pulling the old, the aged doctor off the plane may not have been an employee of the airline, but they may as well have been an extension of their brand. And by having outdated policies or even policies that worked for a certain era that are no longer current, it could mean the difference between being in the paper and damaging your reputation versus policies that are updated, current, and fit for purpose. So, once appropriate, integrate sustainability reporting into your business, uh, business processes. Um, in other words, you want to have policies and procedures that apply not only to financial information, but to uh, water consumption use, for example, uh, climate, um, how you condition your office. You want to have policies that administer the same level of controls for in financial as for non-financial. You want to regularly review policies and procedures. Doesn't have to be every day, doesn't have to be every month but certainly uh, periodically as it fits for the organization. At IMA, we reviewed our board policies um, oftentimes once a year and as needed depending upon environmental change. So let's take a look at Alaska Air. Alaska Air has um, routinely been rated one of the US's most admired airlines. In fact, recently was ranked the best airline in the US for performance and for customer satisfaction. Alaska Air has always stressed the importance of being a socially responsible airline, valuing people, community, and the environment. And their internal controls support a broad range of objectives, which, was, which is what COSA was always intended to do. They've implemented internal controls to ensure both compliance and reliability of goals. So it's one thing to comply, but it's another thing to be reliable and sustainable in your achievement of goals. They've developed policies and procedures that support their commitment to environmentally, environmental and social responsible achievements. So there are incentives and motivations for their onboard um, personnel to balance serving customers in a very unique and positive way but also making sure that they're socially responsible in terms of plastic cup consumption, in terms of water consumption, and other resources that are brought on board. And of course, they conduct internal audits to ensure adherence to the policies. You know, it's great to have a policy and a procedure that's fit for purpose, but if it's not enforced in some way, then the sustainability of that policy and its usability for your internal controls design is not nearly as effective as routine, periodic, and perhaps even random audits. One of the things that we do at IMA um, on our uh, technology infrastructure is we often put out fake emails and we see to what extent our employees respond to them, right? Because we have a policy and a procedure that says thou shalt not touch these type of emails and then create all kinds of um, cyber issues. Well. Um, periodic audits and random tests are a good way to do that. 
Thank you for participating in Unit 5, Control Activities. Next unit will be Unit 6, Information and Communication.